Hey, this is Jason with WP GraphQL, and today I want to do a walkthrough of WP GraphQL for advanced custom fields. This is a plugin that brings your advanced custom fields to WP GraphQL. So any field groups that you register with advanced custom fields, you can set to show in GraphQL. That will bring it to your GraphQL schema and will allow you to use the features of GraphQL to query your advanced custom fields data. So you get uh, more performant queries, you get smaller payloads to your applications, um, and very explicit uh, queries on what fields you want to use in your application. So let me take you through what that looks like. I'm here in a, in a fresh WordPress install. Um, I have just a few plugins active. I have Advanced Custom Fields Pro. The free version should work fine as well. I have WP Graphical, which gives us a GraphQL IDE in our admin. I have WP GraphQL, which is the main GraphQL for WordPress plugin. And then, of course, the plugin that I'm demoing now, which is a, uh, WP GraphQL for advanced custom fields. So let's take a look at how this works. Uh, if I open up Graphical, this is our IDE for querying things. We can query for something like a list of posts. And on the posts, we can query for the nodes and then for fields like the ID, the title, and the date. If I execute this today, I get nothing because I have zero posts created. So that's our starting point. Uh, let's go ahead and create some custom fields and then we'll come back and visit uh, what the queries look like to query that. So let's go to custom fields. As you can see, I have zero custom fields created so far. So I'm gonna create some new ones. First, I create a field group. We can call this whatever we want. I'm gonna call it ACF demo fields. Okay, and then we need to set a location. The, in this case, we're saying we want this field to show on post post type, right? And now we want to say that we want it to show in GraphQL and we want to give it a field name. So I'm going to call it ACF demo fields. This is going to be the name of the field group in the GraphQL schema. I'll show you what that means in a second. Let's publish this and see what that looks like. So in another tab, I'm going to open graphical and let's take a look. So this is going to load our schema, and as soon as that's done loading, we can type ACF, and we can see where that is in our schema now. We have ACF demo fields here, so let's take a look. All right, so we have a field group, and it has a field group name, so we can query the name even though we haven't added fields. So we can do that like this. We can say ACF demo fields, field group name, I'm still getting nothing because I haven't created a post. So, let me create a post. We can go ahead in here and give the post a title. So I'll just say demo post. And we can give it some content. And then of course, I don't have any fields down here, but you can see my ACF demo group, uh, demo fields are showing up. I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. Then I'm gonna go back to my graphical tab and execute the query once more. Here you can see I'm getting the ID, which is a universal ID used by GraphQL. Uh, I'm getting the title of the post, which is demo post. I'm getting the date that I just published it. And then you can see I can get details about the demo, the ACF demo field group that I just created. Let's go ahead and add a couple fields now. I'm gonna create just a text field called just a text field, right? And we will say, show in GraphQL, yes. Let's go ahead and update this. If I go back to my posts now and refresh, we'll see that I have just a text field. And I will type just a value as the value and click update. If I navigate back to graphical, I'm gonna have to refresh here and this will reload our schema. And once that reloads again, I can type ACF, ACF, and click in, and you'll see now I have just a text field. So I can query that now, just a text field. I can execute this, and you can see I'm getting just a value. Of course, if I change this to some random text and click update, and then execute my query again, you'll see I'm getting the, the random text. So any field that I add, um, this is going to work. So let's add a text area field. I'm just going to call this 
text area, real creative. I can update this. If I refresh my GraphQL schema again, as soon as the schema loads, you'll see by the syndicator over here, I can start typing over here. And you can see, as I start typing, it knows text area is a field. That's a valid field to query. So I'm getting a null value again because we didn't actually save any data to the text area. So if I, oh, I also left it as a text field. Silly me. Let me change that. So text area should have made it text area. Let me update that. Edit our post again. So now it's an actual text area. I can type whatever text I want in here. Click update. And when I query the text area, you'll see I get it, the values. So let's add a slightly more complex field now. Let's add an image field. We'll just call this my favorite image. Okay, we'll set that to show in GraphQL. We'll update. And we'll go ahead and edit our post once more. So now we'll have a text field, a text area field, and my favorite image field. Of course, we have, I don't always release code, but when I do, I prefer it in product. I prefer it live. There we go. That's my favorite image. So I can update this post now. Now in GraphQL, uh, we might want access to more than just the ID of this image, right? In, in the database, we store just the image ID. Advanced Custom Field stores just the image ID, but we might want to query more rich data. So let's refresh our schema again. And now we can say, oh, my favorite image. Now you can see these red squigglies are saying, hey, this is an invalid query. And that's because this returns a rich type, a media item type. We can find that in our docs by saying, my favorite image. So here we find the field and it returns a media item type. So we have all these fields that we can query now. So my favorite image, I can query for the title, maybe the date that it was uploaded, and something like the source URL, which we would use to render the image. I can now execute this query, and you can see I'm getting the field group name, the, the text field, the text area field, and my favorite image, like the title, the date, and the source URL. So, you know, we're, we're able to enter this graph, and if I'm building an application where I don't want the text area, and I don't want the, the text field, I can just remove those from my query and ask for just the image and my payload is smaller, the processing on the server is reduced, um, so the experience is all, all around a little bit better. Let's take a look at some more advanced fields. Let's go ahead and add a repeater field. We'll call this my repeater field. Give it the type repeater. And let's, oh, whoops, we gotta add some fields to the repeater, of course. So repeater, so what should we add here? Let's say, um, we'll just call it title and leave that as text. We'll add another field. What's a good field? Let's do a gallery. So gallery, all right. So let's go ahead and update once more. Let's take a look at our post so we can edit some content into it. So now we have just a text field, text area, my favorite image, and now a repeater. Let's add some rows. So we have the title, which could be something like my favorite plugin, and we'll make a gallery about our favorite plugin. So let's upload some files. Let's see. Uh, ah, of course. Let's get some, I have some WP GraphQL logos here. So let's upload these. Oops, meant to upload multiple. Sorry about that. Let's upload a few more. Oh, uh, anyway, that'll do. So we got these two images now in our gallery. We could add another gallery, like another gallery. Right? Whatever we want to do. I'm going to add all three of these images. Okay? So now we can update this. We have a repeater field 
that has a title and a gallery and another title and another gallery, right? So let's go back to graphical. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna refresh my schema. And now we should be able to search for a repeater or whatever you named it. And here we can see my repeater field. This returns a list of, that's what this brackets mean. It's a list of this. So the list has, the list of that type has all of these fields in it. So let's take a look at what that means. So on our ACF demo fields, I can say repeater, my repeater field, and then I can query any of these fields. So gallery, that's gonna return us a list of media items. So I can ask for the ID and the source URL again. And then I can also ask for the title. So when I execute this now, we'll see that I'm getting the name of the field group because I asked for it. I'm getting my image and I'm getting my repeater field data, right? I'm getting the title, which was my favorite plugin. And I'm getting a gallery, which is a list of images, but I'm only getting the properties that I asked for. Um, so, th so this is a gist of uh, how to use WP GraphQL for advanced custom fields. I'll be working on more documentation for all the fields, but we, we support um, many, many fields currently. Um, all flex fields included, repeaters, galleries, uh, groups, nested fields, things like that. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how people use this to build amazing applications with WordPress and, and advanced custom fields.